19 years ago, the United States came under attack. What transpired on 9-11 forever changed the course of our country. The images and video from that horrific day still live with millions of Americans. Our very own Carol Marine was working in New York City as a correspondent for CBS News when the World Trade Center was attacked. She shared her incredible story of survival that day with legendary journalist Dan Rather. All of a sudden, there was a roll, an explosion, and we could see coming at us a ball of flame stories high. He and others screamed, run, and I ran. Uh, I fell. One of them picked me up. We ran as fast as we could, and then he threw me into the wall of a building and covered me. Forgive me. I am, in his, I am in his debt. You know, Dan, I know firefighters do incredible work all of the time, but this was exceeded anything that I can imagine. He threw me into a wall, covered me with his body. Uh, I could feel his heart banging against my back. We were both so sure we were going to die. The flame somehow stopped short of us. But whatever collapsed created, and you saw it in some of that video, Dan, a rain of cinders so thick that you couldn't see this far in front of you and you couldn't breathe. A police officer, and I wish I knew the firefighter's name, a police officer by the name of Brendan Duke grabbed my hand and he and I tried to find our way through it until we could hit a clearing in the light. Such a powerful moment, something many of us will never have to face. Carol is joining us now. Wow, Carol, I got to tell you, I watched it. It took my breath away. I watched it again. And that same feeling, I can't imagine. Um, I appreciate you getting up early with us this morning. Can you take us through that day again? I can. You know, I'm watching it again. For the, I don't watch this video with any regularity, believe me. It, puts, it gets a lump in my throat. Mm -hmm. I was working for uh, 60 minutes, and I was in the broadcast center on West 57th Street when I saw on the monitors the planes going to the tower. I was one of the only people at work at that hour. I knew that I had to get down to ground zero, what became ground zero, just because that's what we do as reporters. And so I made my way down there and um, was on West Street, which was just firefighters and me, and I could feel the ground move. And then this firefighter turned and, as I said, screamed and yelled at me to run, and I fell and he had to throw me back up on my feet. And he, we found a building down the street, an overhang, and that's where he covered me and saved me and then handed me off to a New York police officer. My, in my biggest regret, I've said this all the time, is that I got everyone else's name along the way who helped me, but I didn't have the presence of mind to get that first firefighter. I don't think anybody um, would ever hold that against you, Carol. Uh, I want to go back to you running in that direction. Did you know at the time the magnitude of what was happening? No. Um, at first, we thought because the, uh, the video was at a distance, it may be small planes that went into the tower. We quickly learned that was not the case. As I was making my way down, to West Street and mobs of people were running in the other direction, um, I saw the first tower disintegrate. That ball of flame I saw on the second tower, we theorized was pooled jet fuel that ignited as the tower began to implode and come down. But no, I did not understand the magnitude as I was running toward it. You know, we watch it, Carol, um, for those of us who are not there, and these images are just embedded um, in our memories. For you, what is, what is that one memory that stays with you? You know, it's a, it's a kaleidoscope of memories, um, but it is um, how many people died, and I feel uh, grateful but guilty. Um, that I'm here to tell that story because it was it was one it was the most destructive day one day I have witnessed. But let me add, a uh, you know, generation has come up since then, and they they don't really know 9/11. Right now, they're experiencing their own 9/11 inside this plague, which is a different kind of national explosion and and 
huge sorrow. Uh, so this isn't the only 9-11 that I am now acquainted with. No, definitely a strong comparison there. Um, but wow, the images um, really just take your breath away. It takes you back to that moment. I know, um, like I said, I watched this clip over and over again um, because I had no idea you were there. Um, and so I listened um, how emotional you were about um, the people who helped you. And I know that you were never able to um, find out who the firefighter was, but you mentioned uh, Officer Brendan Duke. How do you like surprises, Carol? Well, right. I, Officer, I know if I'm prepared. Officer Brendan Duke is with us this morning. He is oh, joining God. us. Yep. Um, so Officer Duke is now retired. He remembers this day vividly, and he was looking forward to the opportunity to talk to you this morning. So, Carol, here's Officer Duke. Oh, my God. Brendan Duke. You know, Good morning, Carol. Of that. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm Good so morning. overwhelmed. Uh, I'm... Good morning. Good morning. I, I, um, I feel as you do. Uh, you mentioned you were grateful, but sad that what had happened to, to everybody, and, and uh, you wonder how you made it out alive. And because a lot of people feel the same way, they they are grateful that they made it out, but. It's, uh, it was a sad day, and, and uh, one thing I, I remember was the the thunder of the the thunderous sound of the building as it came down. And initially, we believed it was a uh, another plane coming in because it was such a loud sound. And um, when that cloud of dust appeared, it was really shocking and scary, and all of the above. And I don't think there's anybody there that didn't feel same way. You know, it was, Brendan, as we both came to think of it, I think, it was pieces of desks and part people in that explosion. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, uh, it was uh, death and darkness. And I remember you held my hand and I, we, I didn't have a mask. We, I covered my face with my hand. And I thought to myself, this is really how firefighters die not in the fire, but in the smoke. And you were so solid and so, you just were wonderful. And then you turned and left to go help somebody else once you and I got into the clearing of the air as the, the further we got away, we could see again. Yes, I, I remember walking through the, the cloud and I think we were taking baby steps because we weren't exactly sure where we were. And I remember walking past a city bus with the lights flashing, and there was an EMS backboard on the ground. And we continued walking, unsure of exactly which direction we were going. And um, suddenly, I think, we suddenly seemed to walk out of it on, onto a, uh, right. a street that didn't, wasn't as affected as much. And I think we parted ways again. And I said to your producer, I wouldn't be able to pick you out of a lineup because we really, I really couldn't see you very clearly. And I couldn't, and I couldn't see you. And I wrote letters to the fire department, to the police department, addressed to you. I don't know if you ever got them because at that time we were still in such a, a mindset that we were 9-11 every day after that for a long time. Yes, uh, my commanding officer did get that letter. Thank you very much. And I think I reached out to you once, maybe the following year, just to make sure that everything was okay. Kind of selfishly, I was wondering how, how your health was and eventually how it was going to affect my health too, I guess. Are, are you okay? Is your health okay, Brendan? Yes, 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 I'm fine, thank God. Thank God, and so am I. You know, we all check our lungs. I mean, we're aware that what we, in, we breathed was asbestos and heaven only knows what else. But I'm so glad you are alive and well and so grateful to you <laughs> for your presence of mind and for your enormous care. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I just want to say that I hope people never forget what happened that day. I do too. I do too. All right. I'm going to jump in here for a moment. Um, my thanks to you, Officer Brendan Duke 
for taking Carol Marine's hand because we are very grateful to still have her. And Carol, it is so like you to reach out and thank everyone and to reach out to that commanding officer that is very Carol Marine. So thank you both. I'm glad that you're both well and healthy. And oh, one last thing, Carol, I think you'd like to know that um, he is retired now and he is homeschooling his three kids at home. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so oh a big job. Goodness. He continues a big job. Um, you have a big job and a really important one, Brandon. Yeah. Yes. Thank All you. Right. Thank you both. We will be thank right you, back. Thank you, Oh, it thank is you. my pleasure. My pleasure.